Five players are the most approved in the blue gold game. This is an article that Tyler wrote, a premium article that our YouTube audience, you guys are going to hear from the man himself um, in this video. So your top guy is Jordan Patelho. Tell us why. I just think that as a senior and as a guy who went through not major position shuffling, but went through a few things. I mean, everyone thought he was going to be a rover or some – linebacker that was going to patrol the middle of the field they've kind of settled on him at viper defensive end and i mean when you're a viper just look at what isaiah foskey did the last two seasons 11 sacks in each of those seasons leaves the program as the all-time leader in sacks with 26 and a half but Tello's, he may not get 11 and he's definitely not going to get 26 and a half in a career but when you are put in the position to be that athletic defensive end, the guy who is not going to line up in the dirt every single snap and you're almost playing outside linebacker. I know our, our friend Tim Hyde loves to talk about that Viper position because it is so versatile. You kind of have to produce, man. You have to live in opposing backfields. You got to get to the quarterback. You have to set the edge. You have to be a run stopper. And these are all things that we haven't really seen from Jordan Botello in his three years at Notre Dame. He's just kind of been that guy that comes in and, and maybe he gets two sacks in the Gator Bowl against South Carolina and everyone's celebrating him. Or you see him play against fill in the blank with whoever else is on the Notre Dame schedule and he's kind of invisible. So you obviously want to see that guy who comes in and is able to just win matchups. I mean, you have to win matchups at that position and the blue gold draft is going to be Thursday morning. So we don't really know who he's going to be up against, but I would, I would think they put Joe Alton, Blake Fisher on different teams. That would kind of be unfair to put them on the same offensive line. So we might have a, he might have uh, an ability or uh, an opportunity to go up against a future first round pick. Uh, both of those guys might be future first round picks, offensive linemen. So, again, you're not going to see, like, takedown sacks in a spring game. You're going to see some two-hand touch. But what you want, if you're a Notre Dame fan, is to be leaving that game remembering and thinking, oh, hey, I remember if this was a Saturday in the fall, Jordan Patello would have knocked the lights out of Sam Hartman or Tyler Buckner. You don't want to be leaving and getting in your car in the parking lot and saying, Man, what the heck did Jordan Patello do today? So I think that's why he's got a lot to prove. Here. All right, let's look at your number two um, player with the most to prove. Running back Jabran Payne. Mm -hmm. This seems interesting because, yeah. it, you know, he's, are you saying he's the most to prove because he can prove to be the number three running back? Yeah, I think. And look, I'm, I'm one of the people that are very high on Jadarian Price. When he comes back. I think he's going to be really good. We saw it last spring. But if I'm Jabron Payne, I'm sitting there thinking, hey, what about me? Like, I've been healthy this whole entire time. I've been grinding in practices. When Logan Diggs has been out this spring, I've been the number two guy behind Audric Estime, and I've looked pretty good. I mean, he's catching passes out of the backfield. He's running between the tackles, off tackle. He's doing everything that you would ask in – a running back and Dylan McCullough has said like, yeah, this spring has been about him proving to us that maybe he's not an Audric Estime or a Logan Diggs, but if one of those guys goes out, he, he goes in and you can ask him to do all of the same things at his level. And I thought he's been very impressive. So I think if he goes out there and has a Jadarian price like spring game, like Jadarian price did last year, and I think Jadarian Price had over 100 receiving yards. He wasn't great on the ground, but he had that long touchdown where he ran away from who a couple of defense. Who did he run away from? No, who threw it? Uh, Steve Angeli. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, now I know what you're doing there. Yeah, I just think that he's in a spot where – and look, Logan Diggs has been out, like I mentioned. We probably don't see a whole lot of Logan Diggs in this game because you don't want deja vu. You know what happened last time Logan Diggs played in a blue-gold game? He tore the labrum in his shoulder and had to get shoulder surgery, and we didn't see him again until mid-August. So I think this is – and and maybe this is my way of saying, hey, watch out for Jabran Payne. It would be a sneaky big game potentially. I just think that he has to really take advantage of this opportunity because that's what it is for a guy that is a little further down the depth chart. You go out there and ball out in a blue goal game, you start to get people thinking differently about you. All right, I like that. And then let's take a look at number three. And you have Tobias Merriweather. Tell us about this choice. So this one is, 
you have a guy that's a true sophomore and all of this fanfare, everybody talks about him. Everybody wants to see him on the field, but he only has one catch to his name in his college career. And I know it was a big one. It was a 41 yard touchdown. And it, I mean, if, if he can do that every single game, you can't keep him off the field, but that's my point. Can he be that guy that provides that downfield presence every single game? Because that's what you need out of him. And I know Deion Colsey is going to be a little bit of that guy too, but I think Deion Colsey is more of that guy that we saw in the second half of last season where he was just catching third and 15 passes over the middle because he's so much bigger than everybody. You throw it up and, and there he is. Tobias Merriweather needs to be that downfield threat for Notre Dame. And you have a guy that has, like I said earlier in the show, gone out there first with the wide receivers every single time that we see him. I mean, he is in that top three. If you're a top three wide receiver at Notre Dame, you should be able to catch. I don't know. I don't know how much he's going to play, but go out there and, and catch four to five passes in this blue gold game and give kind of like Jordan Botello, give everyone that's there a reason to go home at night and be like, man, remember watching that Tobias Merriweather catch, especially if it's from Sam Hartman, maybe downfield for about 30 to 40 yards. Maybe even it's a touchdown. He needs to be that guy. And again, this is an opportunity to show that. I'm going to give you an article idea for the, for a, some sometime in the dog days of the summer. It's just the five most exciting Notre Dame football players. Yeah. Tobias Merriweather gets like people talking. Like people yeah. are excited about Tobias Merriweather. Like it's not uh, a bold pick to say, yeah, ty- that's my. Tobias Mara is my breakout player. But, is, but that's why he has so much to prove. That's yeah, why he's on this that hype. Right. I yeah, like I it, Horka. You're, you're, you're a smart guy. I'll try. Number four, an, I, this guy is definitely in that top five yeah. as well, I would say. Jalen Sneed, the linebacker to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, there's always a couple players in every recruiting cycle that the fans are like, when they're true freshmen, like we're just going to talk about them all. Yeah. Year. Why aren't they playing? Tobias Merriweather and I got Snead. both of those guys on this list from last year's class. Yeah, I think Sneed and Merriweather were the, that that for the 2022 class. Yeah, and and that's why he's here. He's like the defensive version of Tobias Merriweather, right? And his situation is a little more interesting because unlike Merriweather, he's not running out there with the first team, and he's not getting all these reps. And you've got the graduate student linebackers ahead of him who it looks like they're Notre Dame right now if they played a if they played Navy in Dublin a week from today you know who's playing linebacker in that game so can Jalen Sneed sort of use this as a springboard into his sophomore season and I mean at this point it's just all of the the media and and definitely the fans they all have the reasons why Jalen Sneed should be on the field he's fast he's getting bigger he's getting smarter He's a really good football player. Prove that to your coaches in a blue gold game, right? Go out there and on, I don't want to say national TV because it's national streaming on, uh, on national internet. Yep. Go out there and show that like, yeah, Hey, I am this guy and I can make all these plays because he's not really a one trick pony. um, But he, you get the feeling that like he still needs to do so much more to get on the field regularly. And that's where the coaching staff is with him. So I mean, this is – sure, you want to call it a a glorified scrimmage? It's still a little bit different than one of the 14 practices that Notre Dame has already had. Go out there in a game-like setting and prove that you can be a guy that's trusted in August and September. Is that Hartman, who leading into this next point, if you haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> is the number five player to prove uh, – the most to prove in the blue-gold game. So – uh, as we play like six minutes of footage of, of Hartman <laughs> that I put together today that Horka and, and Kyle Kelly at Blue and Gold have shot this spring. Like, <sighs> all right. That, I, I, that, all right. It's, it's your turn to talk, Tyler. I, I, I'm, yeah, I, I've, I've said my piece. Yeah, I was going to take this Sam Hartman thing a different direction, and I'll get there. But just piggybacking on off of what you said, if you're one of the people that Mike is talking about saying – it's just a practice. Like everything that you're saying right now doesn't mean a whole lot. It's not telling of what's going to happen with Notre Dame football this year, yada, yada, yada. And say Sam Hartman goes out there and completely outplays Tyler Buckner in this spring game on Saturday. You cannot be one of the people that comes at us and says, look, Sam Hartman was so much better because this spring game is going to take two hours, two and a half hours. 
which is the ent- exact amount of time that we saw out of practice of Tyler Buckner completely outplaying Sam Hartman. So if you're saying, hey, that doesn't matter, but the spring game, you know, what happens there does, but then every other day of the week you're saying spring games don't really matter, you are just completely clouding this, confusing it. And ev- like, like I said a little bit earlier, every single one of these 15 practices is a bullet point. So if Sam Hartman is better than Tyler Buckner on Saturday – that's how the Notre Dame coaching staff is going to treat it. I guarantee you. I wanted to ask Jared Parker this question, but Notre Dame shut off his interview on Saturday after like five minutes. And I was sitting there saying, what the heck is happening? That That's another conversation. But I was going to ask Jared Parker, how do you treat a quarterback competition? Do you kind of sit down after every single practice and log it and say, hey, this guy is ahead right now? Or do you wait until the spring is over and then you take a look at I would think the easier way to do it is the former, the way I was saying, where you take every single practice and you say, this guy was better for this reason and that reason and that reason, and here's how we have them right now. And maybe you just have this constantly happening over the course of the entire spring. The spring game is only going to be one of those bullet points. Now, that said, Sam Hartman is on this list because circumstances have changed. A month ago, he was far and away – Notre Dame starting quarterback. He was the best option. 45 starts, 110 career touchdown passes. Tyler Buckner has single digits in both of those categories. I mean, that is crazy to think about. So now a month later, we're at a point where Tyler Buckner has probably outplayed him in the spring, at least what we have seen from the media standpoint in those two full practices and then everything else. So he's on this list because – it's a chance for him and there are going to be overreactions. So it's a chance for him to kind of say, Hey, yeah, I am that guy with all of those numbers. I probably am the best option for Notre Dame to choose as its starting quarterback. Uh, It's not so much. Don't forget about me as it is. I am me and I'm going to be that dude. And Tyler Buckner has the same opportunity. Uh, I mean, this is his first, I guess his second blue goal game because he early enrolled a couple years ago, but he missed last year's blue goal game. And that was, going to be his opportunity to say hey i'm way better than drew pine instead we get drew pine for the whole game and it was what it was so i just think that this is a game that they labeled it as a game and those two quarterbacks they're going to draft on thursday morning they're going to be on different teams one of them's going to start for one team the other's going to start for the other and i just think that the, sam hartman is in a position now to where he kind of has to push back on everything i've said everything everybody else has said and say himself, yeah, I'm that dude. Watch this. Watch me throw for a couple touchdowns, not turn the ball over, and leave you guys going into the summer on a good note. 